friends, lovers, and all of the others, welcome to another episode of Pod from the Bunker. My name is Kevin Foster, also known as Kev from the Bunker on Twitch. I'm known as Kev D. Foster on most of my socials, Kevin D. Foster on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, we record this live on Twitch. We stream this live on Twitch, so you can come check it out. Um, oftentimes things go wrong and that's because we're live on air. So welcome today. We have another streamer friend. Um, his name is Mr. Jeff Clark live on, uh, on all of the socials. He, uh, he and I found each other through Twitch at the beginning of the pandemic. And then we realized, Oh, we, uh, live not too far from each other. So then we met in real life, IRL, they say, and, uh, Jeff helped me with this guitar here. He uh, he actually built this guitar for me, stained it. He put it all together for me. So I kind of I kind of designed it, and I kind of got the parts. The neck is from a garbage can. It was a zero fret. And he did his magic, took the fret out, put his own custom nut in there out of walnut, made a nice pickguard for it, put all the parts that I purchased together on it, and uh, he started doing that for multiple streamers. So he's been sort of luthiering and up upcycling guitars and. Uh, doing a really cool job of it. I really like what he's doing and experimenting with finishes and stuff. So we're going to talk to him about that. He also plays music live on Twitch. He does a lot of Instagram videos, so you can check him out. Uh, if you're in the chat right now, the guest command will bring up his Twitch. From there, you can go to his Instagram. All of his links will be in the YouTube video description along with all of my links. So if you'd like to follow us along on Patreon, if you'd like to join the Discord, it's discord.gg slash kevdfoster. I got my own custom URL and we are now a verified Discord server. So join Discord. Everything from all my socials goes in there, all the updates, all the information and lots of other chatting. So looking forward to seeing you there. But right now we're going to get to Mr. Jeff Clark live. And uh, without further ado, let's do this. Jeff, how are you, my friend? Hey, how's she going? She's going <laughs> just fine. Nice to see you today. Thank you for doing this. And of course, uh, setup's looking slick over there. It actually matches my overlay really well. I should, uh, <laughs> should get your lights for right. Me. Oh, the, the purple and blue. I kind of. I wonder where I got the idea from. No, I was using green before. <laughs> I was using the green before, and your purple looked slick. And I was like, oh man, well, a bunch of people yeah. use the purple. The risky biscuit too, right? They have a, a slick uh, purple yep. overlay. Mm. Mr. Bo Mr. Bob Laho. Yeah, Bob also Bob has does the old purple yeah. blue. I was like, yeah, it looks really nice. Absolutely. Clean. Well, thanks for doing this today, Jeff. Uh, we've been friends <laughs> for a couple of years now. And just we've been in the same circles. You live not too far from where I do in Toronto, and uh, you've been making guitars, dude. So, uh, talk to me about yep. the first guitars you started to repair and work on. I know that you ordered a couple from Harley Benton, and I know you were building before that. Like you have a mermaid guitar and all sorts of things. So, talk to me where that started and how it got to where you are now. Uh, it all started with uh, well, the very first guitar I got. It was a early '70s Les Paul uh, copy, you know, Japanese made. My uncle gave it to me, and uh, yeah, old roommate headstock broke. Oh, Les pretty, Paul, it's classic. You know, they, on, yeah, that happens just to all of them. Right? Hot tip: if they fall face forward, that headstock is snapping off. Right, hundred percent right. every time. <laughs> I know so many That's, guys who take good care of their guitars too, and it's happened to them as well. They're like the tension on that headstock for whatever reason. Yep. So. And it's just the way they designed that with the angle and everything. Once it hits that nut on the ground, it's just like crack. Ding. Yeah. Wow. So this so, happened to your you know, beautiful first guitar. Yeah. Took that guitar into uh, the shop. I won't say what shop because it's not a good story. And he's like, well, it's only worth like 150 bucks. Like, it's not, it's not even worth fixing up. Right, because it was a yeah, Japanese or whatever? <laughs> yeah, it's got nice fine inlay. It's a cherry body. Like, the wood alone. It's like, eh. So a couple of years passed, and I started working at a machine shop and getting into uh, the old finer details. It was a pre precision machine shop. Right. So we are doing, like, nuclear parts and stuff like that. And so I was looking at the guitar, and I was like, well... I can put that back together. Right. Looked up what kind of glue to get, how to, you know, properly clean it up and put it back together and put it back together, cleaned it up, and it worked for another 10 years. So ever since then, it's kind of just been, well, well I, I, I can just start, I can just work on those frets. A lot of trial and error. Right. <laughs> but you start with but guitars yeah, it's been that about are... 10 years and last year, the old pandemic. I think I 
I just started going nuts, buying kits and throwing them together, getting really nice setup, good sound out of it, really focusing on, you know, what do they call them? Bespoke guitars. Guitars that shouldn't be. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like this neck shouldn't go on that guitar. It's like, well, let me see if I can get that neck to go on that guitar. <laughs> right, right on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have a couple examples of that. I know you have like a 12 string neck mm -hmm. on like a Strat or a Tele even. Uh, they got a couple yep. very interesting guitars. Talk to me about a couple of your interesting guitars. Yeah. So we got... So this is a very interesting guitar. Okay, but I should maybe save this one for last, but so it's a '68 Hags from Viking Body. So if you've ever seen the the Elvis comeback movie, when he's got that cherry red hollow body, that's a Viking Viking two actually. It's got the gold hardware, mm -hmm. so that's a Viking one. Not so cherry red anymore, is it? No. Hmm. Yeah, it looks nice yeah. though. It's got. That pickup shouldn't fit. Uh, the bridge shouldn't fit. The neck shouldn't fit. But it all does fit quite nicely. Right. And so, what's the neck that's on there? It's a. It's a. I got it off an Ibanez uh, Strat copy body. Should be in tune. Good. Let's hear this thing. Set that down. Okay, so what kind of pickups are sitting in that thing, and why are they different? So it's got a 72 Telecaster Deluxe pickup, the wide range, hence the uh, strange pickup rings. Yeah. And then uh, uh, probably mid-90s DiMarzio, a little more expensive up in the bridge here. Right. And what's the switch doing? Switching them? That You put the switch up the top? Or is yep. that where it classically is? Right here. Yep. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure why they did this hole. Oh, okay. But even on Elvis's guitar in the video that or the movie I watched, there's just a hole. That hole's empty. That's so weird. I'm like, huh? Okay. And talking about optional the optional switch hole. So what's the headstock? You have. I see holes in the other side there. You filled them up with. And then, uh, well, it was. I was planning on trying to do a 12 string with it, and the angle of these holes here for the tuners was too much for the nut and it kept just pulling the nut out of the slot right and i was like oh well plan b put some bullets in there nice can you show me that can you lift that up in the front of the camera there yep i might be able to focus a little better it's all good oh that's pretty cool dude yeah that's very cool so those are yep. bullet casings that are fit in the other holes on the other side. Now, were they, you have to press them in there or did you have to widen yep. the holes? Yeah. So everything you've done, like the, where the neck sits on there, you had to widen that or fix like custom that to fit the neck or, uh, no, that, that the neck fit in quite nice. Right. Uh, the only thing I had to do is actually just put some bigger bolts in there. Right. That nice dude. That's very cool. Right on, dude. Maybe you should tune this one first. What? Yeah, what other? Which? Uh, what other um, sort of like bespoke do you have behind you there? That's sort of like pieced together. When you say bespoke, I feel like that should be the name of it because I I said upscale in the intro, and I feel like you're yeah. kind of like or upcycling. You're kind of taking parts of old guitars where the guitar has been broken and just kind of patching it together. Oh, look at this thing! Did you do Absolutely. that finish? What's that? Did you do that finish? Yeah. Show me the neck. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Dude, slick. Where, nice little burst where? in there. Yeah. Dude, that is sick. And black on the sides. And then look at the headstock, dude. That looks smoking hot. Very cool for us Canadians. Eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Debating on the name. Canadiana or Tele? Tele is a, hilarious. It could be a Tele. I like Tele. <laughs> That's very funny. That's a pretty good one. So this one has a classic uh, Tele pickups in it? Yep. Why, uh, actually, strap pickup. Oh, okay. Dual rail. 
I actually just put this one in a few days ago. Right on. And so it had the uh, it had the two singles. And I was like, yeah, I've got this kicking around. I'm gonna see what it sounds like. Right on. And so would you? But it's a Les Paul bolt on neck on a telly. Nice. That's very cool. Hence, different bridge again. You know, had to move the bridge. Yeah. Make it yeah. work with the scale length. Of course. And that's that's basically it. Dude, so rad. And you custom cut that headstock into a maple leaf. Yep. And then did you engrave it with that? Like, how did you get that? Is it burned in, like, the little leaf um, veins? Yes, sir. A little wood burning. Nice. Does wonders. And then just drop a little bit of uh, black stain in there. And, and it filled it back up it. like an inlay almost. Yep. Dude, and then you sanded that off, and then you painted the red after around it, or? It's a, a secret stain. No, I'm not going to lie. It's food coloring and rubbing alcohol. Oh, my goodness. No shit. And then oil on top, obviously. Look at that slick Tongue shot. oil. Dude, that looks amazing. Very nice. Yeah, it works out really well. Dude, that's so cool. And, like, again, bespoke as hell. Yep. Oh, yeah. So talk to me about, like, how... Because it's expensive to make guitars and, like, buy parts and make necks and all this stuff. So, like, why did it just... Is it just at a budget that you started to like patch these things together? I know you uh, your first ones were to fix your own guitars. Yes. Really? Also, uh, I had the tools. Right. But, well, kind of. I didn't have certain specialty tools, you know, like a uh, fancy crowning file that cost like 150 bucks or, you know, nut files that were another $120. A and, whole set, yeah. But... When I first started, I wasn't using those. So I was just using what I had and just the knowledge I had from, you know, making the parts I was making. Right. I was like, all right, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. All right, was, that worked. Yeah. Right? You sandpaper on a toothpick or whatever it is that you had to figure yep. out. MacGyver. Actually, uh, first time it was sandpaper wrapped around a string to get the nut width. Oh, the, my goodness. The slot width. Uh, I was like, I'll just use the string, put a little sandpaper around it. And Just use that. File it in. Perfect, dude. That's so mm. crazy. You're brilliant. I'm really a big fan of like, uh, as you know, like sort of like interesting and smart, clever ways to make things work. Like if you don't have the tool and you can figure out a way to make the tool, that's that's very like clever to me. I'm really like turned on by that, if you will. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. You know, I'm like yeah. well, one of the, one of the I, when I was in the machine shop, one of the old guys, he had a sign on his box. He said. If you don't have the right tool for the job, find it. If you can't find it, make it. Right. I was like, huh. All right. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So have you worked on any acoustic guitars or did you just start with kits or what are some other things that you put together over the last couple of years when you've been really sort of diving in head first to this? Uh, I did get a kit thanks to our friend, Mr. Hank Bud there last year. Okay. That's actually my lap steel. I should have tuned that one up. We could have showed that one. Yeah, well, just, just show, show it. it anyways. Yeah. We don't have to play it. So this is an acoustic oh. kit? Yep, that was an acoustic kit. They had just kind of kicking around their shop, and he sent a bunch out to his friends, and I happened to be one of those friends. And now it's uh, turned into my lap steel with the pickup. Very slick, dude. So you, was that bare bones, and you finished it too? Yep. Very so nice a, job. It was actually more of a red mahogany. Ooh, there's some bird poo on there. <laughs> So talk. Like yeah. so, so tell me the difference about how you got because you want you want this back from me, this guitar here. So tell, yeah. me, tell me the difference. Like, what did you learn from the time you finished this guitar to the time you finished that one? Why is this one? You're like, oh, it doesn't have oh. the shine. It doesn't have the finish I want. What were you? What did you add something in? Like fucking super glue or some ridiculous shit? <laughs> no, I was going with um, what I was learning from like a carpentry course and not just my you know instinct. Right. And so he was saying, oh, don't don't sand past 240 grit if you're staining. Okay. If you're planning on putting stain on. I've had much better luck now going straight to like 2000 grit and then putting stain on. And it turns out like a, you matte, know. That matte finish almost. Yeah. And smooth as butts. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So you, it's like still got a shine, but it's not glossy in any way, shape, or form, right? Like it's just, yeah. 
it's just that matte, but it's still sleek, you know? I like, re- a, like a satin piece of furniture. There you go. Satin is like a look. nice, nice brand new table you get, you know, say a cherry wood table, you know, it's got that nice mm-hmm. smooth finish on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it never had to do with actually like the stains or anything or mixing anything together in your mm-hmm. dyes or anything. It had more to do with the sanding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, crazy, dude. I didn't know that. More sanding. More. <laughs> <laughs> Need more sanding. Always. Yep. Right. Okay. So what's the next step for you, Jeff? Like uh, what's, what's the next build that you have on the, on the chopping block? All right, do you have a table set up for us here? Oh, the table. Uh, not th- right now. No. Okay. The but th- uh, that, that telly there. That was one I built earlier this year, and the neck did not work out. So it was a a kit that was on sale. The neck has a single truss rod, single action truss rod, so it can actually only move backwards. Okay. It can only move, once you loosen it so much, that's where it's set. It won't actually add relief. Okay. So dual action will actually add relief to the neck or 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 the other way. Right, or tension, tension or relief, Yeah. yeah. So I put some, you know, tens on it, light, light gauge strings for electric. Yeah. Uh, there was not enough relief and strings were sitting right on the nut or right on the frets. frets and right. So I ended up putting some jazz lights. So 12 gauge to 52 with a wound G string. Probably my new favorite strings. Oh yeah. And <laughs> for electric pull- guitar, they're pretty cool. Well, I'm a, I'm a heavy handed guy, so I always like heavier mm-hmm. set strings. And I know that you were mentioning the same when we were together the other day, but so does that give enough tension to pull it forward more? Yep. Just enough to get that little bit. Crazy mm. dude. That's so wild that the tension is in like that rod are so closely interwound that like you change the gauge from a 10 to a 12 and yep. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. It's just, you know, it could be just a little half a crank of that rod the truss rod right and that'll put it right back where it needs to be quarter turn or whatever they say right yep so you want to grab that thin line there i'll give you how about i give you yeah. full screen and you could talk about what you're going to do with this one jeff how about that oh yeah sounds all right good. sounds good dude let me kick you over to full screen <clears throat> all right dude i'm going to mute myself and just let you talk about this build and what you're going to do with it and if you want to show us what you've done or what you're That's planning what on all right, mute myself. Oh, you can't hear me, no headphones. <laughs> oh, there we go. He's tied. All right, dude, I'm going to um, mute myself and just give you full screen and let you talk about this guitar, play it, tell us what you're going to change, yeah. why you built it, how you got it, all right? It's all yours. Yeah, so uh, basically it was a kick guitar on sale, very nice body, older body, thin line, um what happened with the neck yeah so single action truss rod it's a maple neck so it's very hard wood so if it's off just a little bit you're not going to be able to get enough tension to actually pull the strings up and get some relief now again um so i ordered a new neck it should be here in the next week or so. And yeah. Just got to put the new neck on, reset it up. It's got a nice uh, rosewood uh, fretboard with a nice fine inlays this time. And the Strat style headstock, which I'm actually going to keep the Strat style clubbed foot headstock this time. I never thought I would say that. I always find the telly looks like more club foot, but they both have that little nub yeah. on the end. Did you change yeah, that? that? Did you change that one that's on there right there? I did. I tried to match the uh, the one I did with the uh, the Viking. The Viking, but oh, pretty good though. I didn't have enough material on None, it, so yeah, it's kind of like a the telly style of that one. I really <laughs> like that fit. I really enjoy that though, because it takes a little bit of that sharpness out of the telly nub that sits on there. Right. It looks cool, man. It's got man. the little bit of a rad there to show the maple. And, yeah. Dude, I really enjoy Very that simple. shape. Maybe that's your custom headstock shape because that like is not telly but looks telly enough. I'm really down with that. Nice, dude. He's got good sustain on it too, huh? Oh, yeah. That's that older body, I think. 
Okay. It's so, just cheap single coils. Okay, cheap single coils. Like yep. they're not brand name or anything, like not Fender. Nope. Sounds alright. I don't right, think huh? so, no. Nice. Dude. And it's all about the feel. How's it feel for you? You like the feel? Oh, lovely. It? So the new neck, you just gotta unbolt that thing, bolt the new one on, then you have a then you'll have a dual action truss rod to be able to move forward and backward. Oh yeah. Nice. Yep. All right, talk and to me. Go ahead. I grew up with the vine inlays on my first guitar, so it'll be nice having them back. Yeah, you ordered that. I miss them. It's nostalgic yeah. too, right? Totally. Yeah. Um, what else is on the docket for coming up? Is there anything else you're going to be working on in the next coming months or repairs or anything you have there? Uh, just kind of cleaning up the uh, Viking there. Right. You notice the blue inside the body. That yeah. was from overspray years ago right. from an experimental finish and didn't work out. So I'm just going to get a brush in there and clean that up and, you know, clean up the pickup wiring a little bit. It get, gets a little... See, this one's nice and clean. The right. other two, they're... No rattly. Yeah. 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 So what about... Uh, do you have any photos that you have of other guitars you've made for other streamers? I know that uh, we've had Maddie uh, Rose on here and you've got a guitar in her hands and we've had... Uh, who just grabbed one from you? Someone just came and got one, didn't they? Nope. Uh, just Maddie. That was... That was the last one. Oh, did you yep. do a repair for somebody? No, just myself. Oh. I've been doing my own. Nice. Yep, just working on my own. Do you have a couple of photos there? Yeah, I'm trying to find. Um, hang on a sec. Because Maddie Rose Acoustic, you made hers very Rose-themed, right? Yeah. I actually had a video for that. If I could find the dang video. <laughs> well, you have full screen if you want to share your screen. If, I don't know if that's going to work for you, but... Yeah, I cannot find the video or the pictures. Oh, that's okay. I I'll, guess they're gone now. I'll tell that's you what, awesome. if you just Thanks, send them to, if <laughs> if you send them to me later, I'll overlay them right now. Pop, there they are. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, look at that guitar. Yeah. It looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the beauty of post production. Okay, Jeff, so talk to me a little bit more about um, how you got these skills. Like you said, you worked at a machine shop and you were doing nuclear yes. parts there. So you learned yes. just basic hand tool skills and then you just applied them to a guitar yeah yep uh i don't even know if i started watching videos i think i just started mucking you know, about throwing my tools at the guitars and hoping for the best <laughs> right so uh did you get rid of the yammy that uh we had a trade on yep i yeah. did yeah nice. ended up selling that for I think, kid bought it for a couple hundred bucks excellent and Ooh, nice kid and you got that Harley behind you, so that's your mm. your, your nine to five or that guitar there behind oh, you. Oh yeah. Do you want to oh, show yeah. us? You want to show us that one? And because uh, it sounds beautiful through the microphone too. Yeah. So just like your guitar, these bottom three strings, four strings around the open area. The last couple of weeks, they were just dense. I call them the cowboy so, cords. Yep. So now you can see those frets, nice and shiny. They're nice glistening, dude. <laughs> they literally it was like a car glisten. Oh yeah. Yeah, this guitar sounds beautiful, dude. Okay, so you bought this guitar, and it's like a bit of yes. a lower budget guitar, but you brought it here and you kind of gave it a whole facelift. Is that your mm -hmm. was your whole mo with these? Because you did that to the guitar that I play for my nine to five or two. Yep. Yeah. So that was probably the sec. That was the second Harley Benton I bought, and you know, once you got, uh, they're saving money by not spending a lot of time on their frets which i kind of get when you think about how much their guitars are costing like yeah, that guitar like, you have it was 100 bucks without a pickup in it you know yeah totally you can't get the wood for that much yeah let yeah. alone <laughs> spend the time to put it all together of course uh this was 600 shipped after tax canadian yeah and all i had to do is just polish up the frets a bit right and on. it was good to go you didn't have to like reset the nut or didn't move anything around. Did you put new nope. head head tuners on it? Nope. All original, whatever it came with. Nice. Nice. And it plays well, eh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it sounds beautiful, dude, I must say. 
And the one you did for me too, like I think you did a bit of facelift on that one. Did you put different bridge pins in it and changed out some of their ABS stuff? Uh, yeah, I think I put uh, bone nut and bridge in that one. Yeah, because it comes it a with an extra AB right tone. Oof. Yeah, mm. totally. Right on, dude. That's beautiful. All right, well, let me bring mm. it back to the interview mode. Uh, you're on full screen right now. But I'll just click this button here. Hey, gotcha. I'm back. Ah, you can see me again. So, Jeff, tell me a little bit about your music career, playing music, because uh, you were playing in a couple, you played in bands. Uh, I believe you met your yep. wife in a band <laughs> or something. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yep. so how did you get into that? How did you start playing music and uh, what was your band's name? Tell me a little bit about your music career. Uh, I was actually trying to think of what the song was. But I, I remember I was probably four or five years old and MTV was a thing, right? And so I'm 90% sure it was Def Leppard, Pour Some Sugar On Me. Okay. The music video came out and my parents, yeah, my reaction was I was headbanging around the living room dancing, you know, rocking out. My parents are like, huh. And they're like, I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Minus the fucking part of my French. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so uh, they're like, oh, you, you, you like this? Because my dad's a 70s solid rocker. You know, he's, he ain't, he's not a country boy, you know. But I grew up in the country where he didn't, so. <laughs> right. But you have so that in like, your bones. Oh, well. You have that in your bones, though. You have that. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Oh, um, I, love, I love 70s, 80s rock. And it comes through. Hard rock. Yeah, you mix it with the country a little bit and you get whatever you become. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, so, look at like Whiskey Myers and Bishop Gunn. Like those, they're hard rockers. Yeah, or at least Southern Just, rock. Like, you know, they have that yeah, sort exactly. of like Skinner vibe to them or whatever yeah, that. Yeah, Allman Brothers, you yeah, know. Yeah, Allman Brothers. Yep. Southern rock and country yep. are like so closely related, like cousins. So. Yeah, Americana, it's like, it's all yeah, kind of related. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So what was your first, like, uh, what was your first band? Was it original band or was it a cover band? And how old were you? I uh, started as cover band. We were doing, uh, <laughs> it's was, it was more of a, oh, what was the first song we played together? Uh, Anthem for the year 2000. Oh, by, uh, Silver, Silver Chair. Chair. Oh, I know that song. <laughs> Yep. Yep. There it is, a D. Yeah. <laughs> it's drop D. <laughs> it is definitely a drop D. Yep. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Was so, you know, we were, we were metal guys. We loved Nirvana, Our Lady Peace, uh, Corn. Corn got really big when I was about 13. Like, uh, we, we basically wasn't a corn cover band because we can actually only cover like two or three of their songs. <laughs> but uh, we had the seven strings, and so all our originals were very corn based. Okay. You know? And, so that was my band in high school for you had spiky hair, probably four or five years. Yeah. Did, uh, you, did you have like mohawk or anything? Yeah, yeah. No, I had the spiky hair, but I always wore a hat anyway. Right. 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 I was always a hat guy. <laughs> okay. Easier. And then uh, I don't want, want gel freaking sweat dripping in down. My eye. I like, know. Oh, I remember doing? hair gel, dude. That was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. You got so the then, old uh, cereal Joe spikes going. Oh, that's what I was asking. Did you have the cereal Joe spikes, which a couple guys in my nope, high school did? But our lead singer did. <laughs> I believe it. It's very corn. Hundred um, percent. So did you? You played in the band. Did you like? What was the first like? Was a battle of the bands in high school or something like the first gig or what was the first gig you guys oh. played or where was it? Do you remember that one? The first gig. I've been Norwood Fair. Oh, the trailer. Oh, the we Nor played the trailer at the Norwood Fair. Damn. Uh, I think uh, that year, it wasn't the day we played, but the next day, Groundswell played. Okay. Which, now known as Three Days Grace. Okay, yeah, yeah. And yep. they, yeah, they're still going, I think, right now. They have a new singer, but they're still going, right? Yep. My, My Darkest Day yeah, singer the in the band My now? Darkest Day singer, yep. All right. Cool, dude. Yeah, that was it. We, uh, I was in through Norwood this weekend, actually, on the way out to the cottage oh yeah and, and yeah as i was driving through i was mentioning like yeah this is three days grace hometown so that was is that where you grew up jeff yeah yeah uh you know public school all the way up till early high school yep right on okay Northern and then small town boy and did you move to 
Peterborough or Toronto or where did you move to that changed your scene in music? Let's say, let's say, where is there somewhere you went where you were like, oh shit, this is a thing? Or, oh, Toronto was crazy. So I was early twenties, just got out of you know that uh, what do you call it, high school sweetheart relationship. Yeah, and and I was like, I'm out of here. Ended up moving to Toronto for a couple of years, and I was teaching guitar. I was busking downtown. That was great. Yeah, was got your feet wet. Kind of like, I kind of went from uh, electric guitar player to acoustic only guitar player. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And the then, appreciation, the sound for it is just uh, something different. And then, so over time, just music has always been a part of your life. And then you've had a job. And then all of a sudden, what happened with the pandemic? And how did you get streaming on Twitch? Uh, well, the pandemic. <laughs> were you on much, twitch yeah. were you on twitch before yeah. that yeah i was on there for a few years before just playing kinda, games yeah off and on i was playing games sometimes i play music sometimes and i think that really f- f's up your uh your algorithm if you're trying to you know get get some notice also have a schedule a schedule is pretty nice yeah mine's i've noticed like, that over the years i'm so bad the people at who have a schedule they're like even for me it's like Oh, it's seven o'clock on Tuesday. I know who's, you know. Right, of course. Yeah. You know, you know who's live. Yeah, that's really yeah. important for me to try to get back in place too. But then you started mm-hmm. streaming pretty regularly, right? You started, learn, like, do you think that the pandemic has pushed you musically? Oh, God, yeah. I used to uh, be a mumble singer, and uh, somehow I found this range that's, I, I never would have thought, you know, five, six years ago that I could even hit. Yeah, it just works for you. It's like also like you're in your zone sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's like every day in the winter, it was probably three, four hours a day plucking away and singing. And it's like I could feel it gradually getting more comfortable as I go higher. It's like, huh, I'm going to keep pushing myself, see what happens here. Just like any any muscle, right? Like you start doing push-ups and then all of a sudden you can do 100 push-ups. I don't know where you're like, how does that happen? Because you worked it and you really worked it. So you're putting in big time hours, dude. And, ha- and like, do you think that that like change, like change your level or like you, how many songs did you add over two years? Uh, probably adding and taking off. Uh, or probably around 500 songs now. Yeah. And I was, when I started maybe 50, like I was struggling to put an hour together live. Right. Like when, when I first started Twitch, I was doing open mics and I had just gotten my first like hour gig yeah which i i had actually taken the full three hour gig but i'd call a couple buddies because i was like I, I don't have three hours of material right now right you gotta guys fill do an hour piece and we'll right. just kind of do like a jam night yeah. Yeah. yeah so now it's like well I, what do i cut out <laughs> oh right for this gig yeah yeah if yeah you have a three hour gig you easily can cover it yeah it's like what's the good ones mm-hmm. I find, I find that it's always like you find your comfort zone, especially for the first set. You want to really warm your voice up or, you know, something that's really easy. and You don't want to be thinking too much. So you kind of, you know, pick those ones. And I, I always I often lean on the same songs, although I have about 500 songs in my list, too. I often lean on the mm-hmm. same 60 to 100 songs that are like, you know, kind of ride me through. Oh, everything. yeah. And, it's, you know, it's ones that, you know, people are going to know and they're going to like and. Yeah, you're not so gonna, you know. You gotta hit the, you gotta hit the room, right? Hit the right vibe. Yep, exactly. Do you, yeah. Do you write any original songs? Uh, I've got one. One. My, my New Year's resolution was to write a uh, five-song album by the end of the year. I got one. Okay, I'm well, you behind. got a few months left, dude. You could write one per month for the next thing. You just <laughs> yeah, gotta yeah. hammer down. Oh yeah. Same as the streaming, dude. Songwriting, I think, is the same muscle. If you just work that muscle and just refuse to, like, sit down and work that muscle, and then all of a sudden it's like you have 500 songs, and, like, they'll go, like, the progression of them will be go, you know, from zero to 100, obviously. Oh, yeah. It's that 1% per day sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So what's the song called? What is it about? Oh, it's called Long Way Home. I see. And it's kind of a mix of... Uh some old stories and may, maybe a little uh, glimpse into the future here. I see. Hopefully, like a like a hope, like right, uh, like it's, a what do you call it? Uh, goals. Okay, goals. It's a long way home. You, you know, you, sometimes, it, well, my whole life it's kind of been the harder way, but not terrible. Like 
feeling quite lucky and fortunate here so of course you know but it wasn't always like that you know right yeah do you so want to sometimes p- it's uh do you have this yeah. one finished dude is it ready to go oh yeah you want to play it for us yeah i can play it i'll okay. try acoustic version okay cool let me uh let me just kick you over to full screen and let you let's hear this long way home oh I wet the whistle here yes sir All right, Jeff, I'm going to mute myself, and let's hear this, dude. All right. Well, let's see how this goes. Forgot the chords already. There we go. songs for a dime Through the haze and the smoke I see the fire in her eyes She said play me a sad song It's been one hell of Some say that's all I know, girl I'll try to play it right It's 2 a.m., the bottle's almost dry Bartender says last call This old guitar's packed up I see her leaning against the wall She said, where are you running off to, boy? This night is still young Gotta get my ass right out of this old city Back to where I belong She said I love going for a country drive Out of the city see the stars shining Cruise down that river road Drove it nice and slow Along every country song, this is where we belong. We gotta take a long way home. Saturday morning, see that red sky horizon. up side by side our heads and our hearts are pounding black coffee and a little summer dress sitting on that front porch swing she looked to me said grab your guitar boy play me that sad song again and we went out for the country drive out of the city and see the stars shining cruise down that river road we drove it nice and slow 
on a back road Her bare feet hanging at the window Hair blowing in the wind Radio on Singing along to every Kevin Foster song This is where we belong Gotta take the long way This is where we belong We're gonna take the long way home Woo! My voice is shot after earlier <laughs> Oh, that, that, I ran out of spots Hey bud, nice job That's beautiful, that's great man You were working on that uh, probably about well, earlier in the year, you were working on that tune, and uh, now I've heard it's come like to fruition. And like, we were talking about possibly working together to record that. And I'm totally down, man, mm -hmm. dude. You got the you yeah. got the meat and potatoes there now. Oh yeah, Sound, yep. sounds sounds beautiful, the, dude. Got the idea down. Good lyric, good melody. Oh yeah. Can you turn off Very the reverb for me, bud? Sorry, what's up? Verb. You're oh right. yeah, sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Boom. There you're Thank back. You. Thank Sul you. Sultry <laughs> voice. <laughs> Nice job, man. I really enjoyed that. That's amazing. So Ooh. you got one in the books. And yep. I think that like my job now is to motivate you to get at least two in the books. Now your goal was to have five. If you get to two and a half, you did 50% of your goal. So like, come on. Oh yeah. Before the end of the year, let's crush one more out, dude. Yep. That's come, the plan. Come up with an I idea. Think by, I think by the end of September, I'll easily have another one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That means we have, that means we get the motivation like, oh, uh, eh, just I'm busy with the summer and the kid and of course, playing of course. and outdoors. It was nice. <laughs> like, it was, a, yeah, summertime, dude. Totally. Oh, man. I get it. I've been busy as all hell, too. It's been wild. Like I spent here. more time outside than inside this summer. And yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> totally. All right, dude. If you could go on tour with one musician or two musicians, dead or alive, who'd they be? Oh, man. Wow. That's a tough one. By the way, nice shirt, dude. We're both we're both sporting the bunker wow. gear tonight. Yeah, you saw that. I sure did. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, just because I learned so freaking much, Chris Stapleton. Yeah. Yep. It's a good one. Dead or alive? Hip. Oh yeah, the hip like Gordon, yep. the, the original Gordon. Hip. Yeah. Yep. Yep, the hip would be. And side note, I hope everybody watched um, the Foo Fighters playing with uh, Taylor's son on the drums oh, there man, the other I day. Oh man, I bawled my eyes out. Oh, I watched oh it today. I fucking... He did he not look like he was possessed by his father, dude? One hundred percent. Something was happening 100%. there. There was something like the happening way he's there. He's hitting everything. I was like, and you look at his wow. face. Wasn't oh. that epic, dude? Dude, that was oh. a crazy moment and in time. solo. And Dave's just like, his smile's just like. you never oh, seen a kid hit no, the drums no, that no. hard. Have you ever seen any human hit the drums that hard? Oh, like no. he was possessed. He was getting something out there, dude. That was insane. I'm glad you brought that it's up like, because I watched that today. Yeah, I, I watched my eyes. that this morning and I, I, yeah, I bawled my eyes out too. It's like, what the hell, dude? That was rad. That was so crazy like to see that. Yeah, power of music. And like at the same time, you put yourself in his shoes. It's like, oh, the dude has no dad anymore, and like the pressure of all of this, and like here he is, just and, like, the song choice. Yeah, of course. Oh, for fuck's sake! Oh. Oh, I highly recommend. Me. Highly recommend. That was super. Yeah, if you haven't amazing. seen that yet, go do that. It's that, amazing. That's what music's all about, dude. And like the song you wrote is like similar to that, man. It has certain meaning to you and other people and stuff. So I really would like to encourage you to continue to do that shit, man. Um, yeah. What would you have on your rider okay. with these uh, with these musicians with the hip and Chris Stapleton? What do you What are you gonna have like in the green room set up for you guys? Pre and post oh, show. Frick. Pool table. Okay, you're gonna play pool. I got it. Billiards. Maybe pool table, poker table. Okay. Little, little. Uh, you gonna try to gamble these guys to get their money? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, uh, just have a good time with them. Like just is shoot there the shit. Specific beer. Learn. Is there a specific beer oh, and or booze that you would want there? <clears throat> oh, for me, I I gotta have my moose head. 
Okay, Moose Head it you is. Me. They're going to yep. give you a sweet neon light if you buy enough. Also, mm -hmm. is there any food that you guys you want in the back room? Oh, what kind of food? Huh. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I would, I would be able to eat. <laughs> True, but what about after you get off and the stage? And I know. Like, even still, oh, it's freaking pizza. Yeah, pizza, classic, like, whatever the hell everyone wants. Oh, there you go. Ask the crew. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Um, Jeff, what makes you happy? Uh, playing music, playing with my kid, watching yeah. him freaking laugh. It, it makes me laugh every time. So nice. Yeah. Do you? Can I ask you? Do you think that uh, music plays roles in your child's life, and how do you think that you would like to encourage that? Or oh yeah, um, you know, he comes down here. The first thing he goes to is my acoustic. He starts just plucking Dang away. And, yeah, you know, he's got pianos and little xylophones, and he's always banging away up on up there. So. Yeah, it seems to be therapeutic for children. They just make a noise. Oh yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, a look at Taylor uh, Hawkins' son. Uh, oh, ther therapy. Talk about therapy. I think that was probably his his uh, biggest mourning moment of his father, and like he was just being a rock star. Like just. Oh yeah. I mean, if like he can almost see it. Like yeah, like the whole weight just kind of like fucking escaping coming. As yeah, he's fuck going yeah, through the dude. song. Like oh. when he came out, he's just like, <sighs> I drink yeah. the water, and it's like, oh man, yeah, dude, that was so, so epic. Like, would love to shake that kid's hand, and give him a hug one day. You know, how old? He didn't even have facial hair. He's got to be under fifteen. Wait, oh. fifteen years oh, old? Oh yeah, probably. He's 15, a kid, 16, right? He maybe be, sixteen. He might be. Oh, it's fourteen. Isn't it 14? He could oh, be. He's young. <laughs> I didn't look it up. His name is Shane, though, but that was a he heck of a moment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering if uh, you'd encourage your son uh, to play more music or if you're going to put him in lessons or if uh, it's just sing along at the campfire or what that is going to be for you. That's all. Yeah, like, uh, it's kind of like what my parents did to me. They saw I was inspired. They're like, oh, he likes rock and roll. And funny thing is, my dad's a drummer. Okay. Dedicated drummer. He still gigs around town. He's... 60 something plus you know yeah and uh so he asked me he's like oh what do you want to play and i was like well the guitar player is getting all the attention <laughs> from the girls so i, I want to play guitar he's like ah oh. not nah, drums you know, so, drums get it yeah if he, drums if, are he pretty rock if he gets the bug if he gets the bug and you know hopefully just seeing me playing will kind of inspire that or of see course. my dad play the drums if he wants a drum set hell yeah Yep. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, just see where they lean and sort of lean in with them. If they are, if he's whacking on oh, yeah. pots and pans, heck, have, get him a drum kit sort of thing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Nice, dude. Um, right on, dude. I, I think that's good for me today, man. I really appreciate you doing this, and I'm like, really glad that you're still making guitars, still streaming music, and I know you have some big plans coming up. You're going to do some website stuff, so uh, keep, yep. us, keep us informed on it, all of that stuff. Um, Absolutely. if there's any new links in the future, send them my way and I'll try to update the, uh, description in the YouTube video. And Maybe. this is going to go out to all the podcasts, uh, platforms as well in audio form. And most of all, if you want to work on that song together, uh, just lay it down to a click track. Just, it doesn't have to be perfect so that I can, oh, yeah. so I can do yep. some drum and bass and do some production on it. And then I'll send it back to you for whatever. I just need the the Sweet. you know the bare bones, but we'll work on that together, dude. I'd really like to do that and try to inspire you to do some more writing and recording. Beauty, man, awesome, man. sounds awesome, <laughs> dude. Th yeah, no, absolutely, I'd it'd be my pleasure. Well, so I'm learning too. Thanks for uh, having me, Bunker. Yeah, buddy, you guys thanks. Are awesome. Thanks for scoring been, the shirt too. You guys have been awesome to me for years, so thank you guys. <laughs> I appreciate that, dude. And likewise goes for you, man. You've always been in the chat. You've always been there. Been a VIP in the chat for a long time, and. Uh, I think we even, uh, since mixer days man yeah absolutely that's what yeah. i mean like we we met digitally at the very beginning of this pandemic and now yeah. we're like irl pals and stuff gonna gonna Probably. meet up next wednesday actually yep right on dude well oh, look, frick. maybe we'll do a stream here hell yeah we'll man i'll come early in the day we can do that fire it yeah. up let's do it yeah looking forward right. to it all right dude all right well man i'm gonna let you go and close this out and uh we'll be in touch next wednesday we'll hang out we might be live on jeff's channel so everyone come and check that out and i'll let you know in the discord but dude it was great to learn about you i hope everybody got a little bit more insight into where you came from and where you're going and uh thank you for doing that brother cheers talk to you soon man peace 
Okay, now what's good? Let's get that beat going. Uncle Kev. Jeff. Jeff Clark live in the house. What a great dude. He's he's helped me so much with my guitars. Helped me repair them. He has... Uh, we've done some trades. He sold me some guitars. Like I said earlier, uh, helped me make this beautiful slide guitar here. Little lap slide. Be the full picture of this thing. So this one is... Uh, is uh, assembled and uh, semi-designed by Jeff. It's a piece of uh, pine from my parents' barn and a neck that I found in the garbage, zero fret, and Jeff had went ahead and put a walnut nut on there. And I 3D printed my name to put it on the top. It's a foster. Um, got some cheap parts. Jeff made this walnut uh, cover here to put all the electronics under it as a pick guard. And uh, here it is, my slide guitar, good guitar, which I will use on some of my songs. Super rad. Jeff, thanks for being here. Everyone else, thank you for watching. I appreciate you all. You're the best dude. I appreciate you. Um, I'm going to have a quick minute to tell you about all the links below. Please go and click on at least two of them. If you're following on YouTube, follow on Twitch. Maybe go into the Discord. If you're on Discord, maybe go into the Twitch or maybe go into the YouTube. Whatever it takes. But I'm just trying to spread my uh, my viewers and my friends and my fans all out all over the platform. So if you're not following on everything, follow on everything. Once again, all of my socials are popping up below me here. If you're on YouTube, please like, subscribe, comment. Any questions you might have for Jeff or myself, let me know in the Discord if you guys uh, have any guests that you'd like to see on the show. Uh, that can be for the live from the bunker, bunker sessions or for the podcast. Happily do that. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you, moderators. Until next time, y'all keep it between the mustard and the mayonnaise.